Ready, Dean? Yes. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the December meeting of the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. Our first order of business is the call of the meeting to order. Second order of business is a quick roll call. Looks like we have everyone here except for Mr. Dorsweiler and Mr. Bennett. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Chair requests the staff confirmation that the Kansas Open Meeting Act required notice has been uh, properly provided. We had this packet has been posted. Yes, it was. Okay, yes it was. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is to uh, approve the minutes of the September 19th, 2019 regular meeting. Everyone's had a chance to look at that. Does anybody need another moment or two to go back to that? Nope. Okay, well, then we would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. I move to approve the minutes as written. Okay. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes as written. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. We'll move on to new business then. We have a uh, appeal before us, application V19-9, which is uh, asking for an appeal for Kansas Wesleyan University for the front yard setback variance that is currently in the uh, zoning ordinance. So staff, if you would please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a property uh, that's been known by various names, but most recently is the Salina Women's Clinic, and the building on the property dates back to 1956. It was originally built as a medical office building and has been used as a medical office building or clinic since that time. At the time the building was constructed, there was a 20-foot setback uh, required from Claflin Avenue that was conforming at that time. When the city was comprehensively rezoned and remapped, this became a R2 zone property. And in the R2 district, the minimum building setback is 25 feet, which made the existing structure non-conforming as to setback. Um, in July, we met with representatives of Kansas Wesleyan University and their architects, and they went over their plans for converting this building uh, the former clinic building into the home of the Kansas Wesleyan School of Nursing. And the project would involve demolition, remodeling of interior space to meet the needs of the nursing school. And the project also proposed two small additions, one on the front to create a new front entry vestibule and add to the curb appeal. And the second one was an addition in the back, which would provide a elevator and stair shaft. And there was some discussion uh, which will leave to the architect about possibility of a roof, rooftop terrace or event space. Uh, the plan is to utilize the existing parking east and west of the building. Uh, those will be reworked slightly and the circle drive in front will be removed. Um, we also had some discussions about um, the kind of checkerboard zoning pattern that we had on the north side of Claflin on Kerwin there and so um, in July an application was filed to take a number of lots on Kerwin and Claflin and to rezone those to U University District consistent with the rest of Kansas Wesleyan's campus and the Planning Commission recommended approval of that change on September 3rd 2019 and they uh, that action was ratified by the City Commission on October 7th, 2019. That means this property is now zoned U University District. One thing that comes along with that is that the front setback is more non-conforming than it was because in the University District the minimum setback for a new building is 50 feet. So in this particular case um, the property has been transferred from Salina Regional Health Center to Kansas Wesleyan. The architects are moving forward with their plans. The uh, plan is to add a vestibule that would extend another eight feet into the already non-conforming setback, which would reduce it from 20 feet to 12 feet from the front property line. And so this application was filed to allow the proposed 12 foot by 30 foot front vestibule to extend out to within 12 feet of the Claflin Avenue right-of-way. 
And so, um, one of the uniqueness cited in this case is that we are dealing with an existing structure that was already non-conforming. And although it's non-conforming, its setback is consistent with a number of other properties along Claflin Avenue and throughout the Kansas Wesleyan campus. And um, the other thing that's unique about this property is that uh, can, the right of way for Claflin is 110 feet wide, which is very unique compared to streets with a similar classification in the surrounding area, which have a 60 foot right of way. So um, the result is there's much more green space between the curb line and the front property line on Claflin than on a typical street. The other thing that means is that even though it's 12 feet, would be 12 feet from the property line, it's going to be about 67 feet from the center of the street so it really won't appear as if it is um, crowding the street because of the extra right-of-way width. Um, the applicants note that there's really no impact from this on neighboring property owners because Kansas Wesleyan owns virtually all the neighboring property and so they're the only ones affected. The other thing as far as impact is um, it could be argued and has been by the applicant that this addition will actually enhance the appearance of the building and not detract from it. So the reduced setback will actually at, allow the building to be more attractive than it is in its current condition. Um, and one of the things we did as a staff is um, at one time there were, between the church and the clinic, there was a row of five houses and we looked at those and those houses had, three of them had a setback of 15 feet. And the other thing you might note if you've driven by is that the church itself has a zero setback from Claflin. So even with a 12 foot setback, this would not be out of step or out of place with the prevailing setback on the north side of Claflin. Um, the hardship is, is somewhat self-apparent from the standpoint that it's pretty hard to take an existing building that's already non-conforming and make it non or make it conforming. Uh, the two choices are to remove the front portion of the building or to pick the building up and move it back. Neither of those are, are really physically or financially feasible. So um, not allowing for the vestibule addition would essentially and negate their attempts to try to beautify this facility and incorporate it into their campus setting. Um, staff didn't identify any impact on public health, safety, and welfare. One of the things we look at with building setbacks and moving things closer to the streets, make sure they don't obstruct uh, driveway visibility. But because of the oversized right of way and the distance from Claflin itself and 4th Street, this is not going to have an impact on visibility at any intersection. Um, so one of the reasons for the 50-foot setback in our university district is to try to preserve a campus-like atmosphere um, and to preserve green space. Um, but one of the things that we noted is that there are already existing buildings on both sides of Claflin that have less than 50 foot setbacks. And so this really wouldn't be changing the character of the campus. Um, the other thing we point out, and you can see it in the, at the bottom of the screen, but the Student Activity Center here, um, that addition came before the Board of Zoning Appeals in 2006, and a similar variance was approved. And that was based on the fact that even though it was less than 50 feet, the setback matched the setback of the existing library building. And so, again, this the requirement would have been for this to be set back 50 feet, but keep, keeping it in line with the, the already existing library building didn't change the, the character of that streetscape. Um, the other thing is that uh, due to the shallow lot depth and the alley behind, it's only 120 <coughs> feet deep. The fact that they're attempting to remodel, reuse, and enhance the appearance of an already non-conforming building, we don't think that approval of this request would conflict with the intent 
of the university district, which is in addition to providing for an open campus feel, the purpose of having a separate university zoning district is to try to give colleges and universities more flexibility to carry out their operations than they would if they were in a residential or commercial district. So your options this afternoon would be to approve the setback variance as requested with or without any conditions. Uh, you could approve a lesser variance than requested, which would require the size of the vestibule to be adjusted or reduced. You could postpone action on this application if you feel like you need additional information, or you could deny the request if you don't think the findings in support of a variance can be made. If you find that the applicant has provided sufficient information explaining the hardship on the nursing school that would result if the proposed vestibule had to be reduced in size or eliminated, the only uh, recommended condition we would have is that just that the building addition conform to the site plan and proposed building elevations as submitted to and approved by the board. Um, attached to the report, we have just drafted some um, potential Findings you could rely on in a motion. Those are just there as possible findings of fact, and we'd be happy to address any questions you have. If you have any design-related questions, we would refer those to the project architect. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions for the staff report? Nope. Nope? Okay. Any questions for the staff report? For me? No, I don't have any. Okay, no questions for the staff report. We'll not give the uh, individual time to represent the uh, builder in Kansas Wesleyan University. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm Maggie Gillum. I'm with Jones Gillum Renz Architects, and we're representing Kansas Wesleyan today. Um, honestly, I think Dean and the staff did a really great job of putting together a report for you guys, um, showing you what it is we're planning to do with the building and the site. So um, I think I'll just answer questions if you have any. Okay, we'll just move forward. Any questions from the committee? Have, has there been any decision made about the rooftop and oh, the use the of that? Um, no, there has not been a definite decision made about that. It has been suggested by the owner that we add a rooftop deck for potential um, alumni or donor parties that he does occasionally. Um, however, our structural engineer is currently evaluating whether or not that roof can hold that many people, so we have not gotten a definite answer on that. So at this time, we're not moving forward with that. Is that currently a membrane roof on it now? It is. It's a concrete deck. Concrete deck. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks. Then we'll uh, just double check with staff. I know that the surrounding buildings were Kansas Wesleyan University, but did we get any other comments from the general public? I think that's to indicate there was only one non-Kansas Wesleyan owner that we provided notice to, and that was like east of 4th Street. Right here. The only an individual that received notification outside of Kansas Wesleyan themselves was the resident on the east side of 4th Street ac across the street and we did not receive any comments from them. Okay. Yeah, so Kansas Wesleyan knows this parking lot here and then this is the president's residence for Kansas Wesleyan so we notified the president but he was already aware of the project. So. Okay. okay thank you. With that we'll uh, look to the board then and uh, accept a recommendation for the appeal. Anyone would like to make a recommendation or a motion? I make a motion to accept application V19-9 with, um, staff, rec oh. with sta staff recommendation on page seven. Oh, we still can't hear you. Still can't hear? Can you hear me now? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So. Recommendation for acceptance of application V19.9 with the staff recommendation on page one of the, the building addition shall conform to the site plan and proposed building elevations as submitted to and approved by the board. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Would anybody like to second that motion? I'll second that motion. Okay, motion has been uh, initiated and seconded. I'd like to open the floor for discussion about that motion. Anyone have any discussion they'd like to make? 
No, having no discussion then, I would suggest that we uh, move on the motion to approve the appeal with the one staff recommendation. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much for coming to represent the uniform, university, and thank you, staff, for a thorough report. We'll move back to the first page of the, the uh, agenda. We don't have any unfinished or other business for you unless any uh, board members have any other business or questions that board members want to raise of staff. Okay, we have none. And I see no one else in the audience for a public forum. So I think we can move forward and uh, we would accept a motion for adjournment. Motion for adjournment. Okay, motion has been given. You have a second for that? I'll second. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None opposed. The meeting of the December boarding, zone of boarding appeals is adjourned. We'll get you a letter.